when it's all said and done, what do you want to be remembered by when you leave this earth? Honestly, I just want to, um, I just want to affect like everybody that like that's around me. Like, I'm not sure how, how others, like people that I don't know, but will see my work, like how, how they'll feel. But like, I just want like my family members or like, friends near me, like just to see me, uh, like just kind of create and do this stuff just so uh, they can know that like, you know, if they want to, there's something that they're like itching to do, but then they feel like they might doubt themselves or like, they might think they just have to like settle for whatever job. Like, I just want them to know that, like, you know, like, there's a, there's definitely, like, an outlet to them. It's definitely a possibility, you know, like, if I could do it, like, you know, definitely they can do it too, for sure. It's pretty much what I want to be remembered for. Welcome to the Art of Creating Yourself. I'm Ron. We got Fod back in the booth. How you doing today, Fod? What's up, bro? Chilling, yeah. chilling. You no. Know? Chilling, chilling. Um, yeah, so this is the art of creating yourself. We got uh, me, Ron. I'm the host of this um, with Six Five producer and my co-host Fide. And we also just started a new podcast called the Around Our Hype Pod, hosted by the other member of Around Our Hype, Jason Arbon. And he'll have important conversations there about uh, social and cultural issues. And we'll also just shoot the shit, you know. But speaking of shooting the shit. We are here with the man behind Jerome, the shooter films. Jerome, how you doing today, my guy? Good, guys. I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. All right. So uh, here at Around the Hype, we like our guests to introduce yourself. So just tell us your name, the city you're from, the city, and what you do, like your craft. So, yeah, I'm Jerome. Um, basically a film director um, just in South City. Just been like filming these videos for like a few years now. Um, yeah, I'm Filipino. I'm South City. Oh, yeah. So we all grew up in South City, and um, I guess you're the third guest that actually grew up in South City along with Danny and uh, Iraya. So what do you think the environment and the culture that you grew up in as a Filipino in South City actually had impact to your crafts that you do today? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Um, just... I love Filipino, like, in school, I just, like, really, really creative, like, I don't know, like, a lot of Filipinos, like, uh, at school just end up, like, dancing or, like, some type of art, um, you know, like, everybody just has their own, like, craft, I think that kind of, kind of affected, like, the way, um, just, like, I brought up, you know, just growing up around here, because, I don't know, everybody just kind of finds out, um, just who they are, you kind of lean more towards, um, uh, or I lean more towards, like, hanging with people that are, I'd rather like be like a photographer or like a something creative like that. So yeah, being filmed and stuff is just basically like my outlet for my creative stuff. Basically. That's what's up. That's what's up. What do you feel like your job is to document history? I'm really just like experiencing it, and, like kind of just going through with it. Like a lot of people, um, I mean, everybody's documenting it because you know we just got phones, so we could just document anything nowadays. But uh. As a videographer, like definitely, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going through with it, you know. I think I want to kind of want to like see it pan out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like, there's definitely a. Um, even though I mainly do music videos, there's definitely like a part of me that like mainly just like loves, loves capturing moments, especially like the documentary type of thing. Um, I mean, if, if anything comes up, you know, if I um if I ever get inspired to, I mean, I definitely would do something like that. And in like the music videos, do you ever have like moments where you're like, oh, I've seen this in another music video, right? And we can like put our own little spin on it and make it like maybe it's something from I don't know 1980s or like the 90s, right? And we're like, oh, you know, obviously it's 2020s now. I can put my own little spin on it and also give like praise and credit to where it came from. Do you ever have like those moments? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh yeah, I had like a shoot, a shoot recently. I don't know. Every shoot I have, I just wanna, I just love those '90s MTV, you know, those '80s vibes. I like throwing that in. I think, um, I don't know. I think we're just like addicted to like, <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's in everything. But then, like, I just I love that aesthetic. You know, I love bringing that back. Like, 
now. Like things like with music videos now are cool, but uh, I don't know, just something about those music videos where like Will Smith was in or music videos at times when Buster Rhymes was popping, you know, with mm-hmm. these music videos, Eminem music videos too, like they're just popping and like you can't really find anything like that nowadays. I don't know, those videos are, are dope though. That's what I'm really trying to like bring back with like these videos we trying to do. Yeah, just bring like that vibe again because it was like, it was when uh, these videos were less serious and more just like, just for fun, you know, like more entertaining and stuff like that. Definitely creative and nostalgic, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So in this next segment, we're going to do something called Hypertype. We tried it in um, the Around Our Hype podcast and we gave you a little spiel about what it was before. So the segment is a game we play with our guests where we pull a topic and we all have to say whether it's hype right whether that's something that's just kind of like a fad or people just kind of think it's true and maybe not a fact mm-hmm. or tight or something that you think it's here to stay and it's genuinely cool or just mm-hmm. all around a fact right so i'll give my opinion uh fadi i guess you'll give your opinion and then we'll go through them and we'll circle it mm-hmm. um and, con- and con- continuing and then after jerome you give your opinion i'll i'll tell you what the opinion was of the instagram poll that we took and this many people or this percentage of people said hype and this percentage of people said type. And if you also want to um, comment on the actual topic at hand, as it is supposed to be like a, a film video um, videographer type uh, topics, you know, you can do that. All right. So the first one we have is the first, not the first Apollo, but the first moon landing on the Apollo mission. Do you think that was hype or tight? I think if it was if it was um, fake, it looks really good. But then I've also seen some behind the scene clips, so I gotta go with I gotta go with that. Is it tight? I it tight. Yeah. Okay, you think what about you, Fod? I'm gonna go with tight. So that shit's cool. Like land on the moon. By the same time, looking at that footage, that shit looks hella like fake. That shit looks like hella <laughs> fake. Like jump in there with it. Like it just looks bad fake. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, like, like, I like to believe two. it was real, right? Yeah, like I like to believe yeah. it was real. Like I like to believe it was tight, and mm-hmm. but everything, I guess, and the further we get from something actually happening, I guess the more hype it is because yeah. you really, you really distance yourself from it becoming real. So, or it, for it feeling real, really. So I think it, I'm gonna go with tight, right? I like to believe that the moon landing was real and you know be an actual footprints of the moon and whether they were bouncing like that i don't know about all that or <laughs> like the gravity yeah. levels or the like the the shadows and stuff i'm not even gonna trip off that you know? like, Wait. but I'll, i'm gonna rock with i'm gonna rock with they were actually there on the moon that's what i'm gonna rock with and the the poll says 34 percent say it was hype and 66 percent say it was tight right so two-thirds of people said Either they actually thought it was real or actually thought it was cool. Either one doesn't even matter, right? All right. So the next one we got is Kobe. Rest in peace to the mom. But actually, 15 years ago today, he rocked the 81 points on the Raptors. So I got my little Kobe swag on. I don't know if y'all can peep it, but um, there's this famous video in which he's in. Uh, I believe it's the Hyperdunks. Fod, do you know if it's the Hyperdunks or not? I'm not yeah. sure. To be honest. He's yeah. He he's in a shoe, right? And he's uh, rocking this Nike ad. I don't know if you've seen it, Jerome, but it's Ashton Martin comes and he's like, oh, I can jump over it. And, and somebody's like, nah, you can't jump over it. No, 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 no. I bet I got the, um, the hyper dunks on, the hyper fuses on. All right, bet, bet, bet. And then the car supposedly comes and he jumps over the Ashton Martin. And everyone's like, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy, crazy. So do you think that was hype or do you think that was tight? I don't know. If that was real, I would say, I think it's real, honestly, but there's got to be like a lot of, uh, what do you call it, like, documents that had to get signed or something you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, it was, right it was crazy but i thought it's he's a half yeah because he's like a half billion dollar man at that point you know what happened if you take a, a toe like you know and he goes flying yeah so what do you think Fod? i'm gonna say like even though yeah I, kobe's a legend and i want to believe it's real but i feel like they wouldn't do that to kobe because then it's a whole ass of, like <laughs> Aston martin like they run him over then what <laughs> they, i've I, don't like, know, you I know, feel like part of being a legend is doing legendary stuff, right? 
And uh, there's not going to be no Kobe slander from my part today, so I'm going to go with tight. I'm going to say Kobe actually did it. He jumped over the Aston Martin. It was a whole moment. Um, Nike got their ad promo, whatever, right? Let's see. So 42% of the people said it was hype, and 58% of the people said it was tight. So whether you can do with that information what you want to do, I mean, I'm going to say it was real. You know, it does – it looks a lot more fishy than the moon, <laughs> the moon landing, you know, and I know there's some things you can do like video editing wise, where he makes it seem like he jumps higher or the car moves faster. The car's not actually there and him and the car are never actually there in the same scene. So I don't know. I'm not, I'm not but slandering Kobe today. I do believe that he who is like, he is able to jump over. He definitely has a very, I feel like the car okay. is going fast enough for sure. Like he's for sure able to, I just feel like that commercial alone. Okay, so that's actually a different part of the conversation. Can he do it? Yes. Did he do it? Probably not. That If that's the case, then I'll probably go with hype, right? But I like to believe he did it. <laughs> just just for the legend effect, you know, that is the, yeah. the late, great Kobe Bryant. All right, so for our next topic, we have the fisheye lens or the fisheye filters. Jerome, do you think that's hype or tight? I think it's... I would go with hype. Okay. Just because, uh, I don't know. I like the, do you mean like versus, like versus them or just both of them in general? Um, Just both of them as like, a, like whether people have the actual lens or it's like a filter on like an app they use. Just a fisheye, like, um, I guess using a fisheye in some, yeah, in some yeah. sort. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with hype. I think it's probably just a trend, but I mean, like, you know, like, most music videos nowadays are uh, inspired by like skateboard videos, you know what I mean, with the fisheye lens. Mm. I think it's def definitely like a, a living point being used in LA and the Bay for sure, but definitely hype though. Definitely mm -hmm. hype. Fadi, what you think? I'm gonna say hype. I'm gonna say hype, but then at the same time, it's weird because then <laughs> I feel like every generation uses fisheye. Especially mm. for like, like skate videos, if you see skate videos, like every single generation, they still use fisheye. So I feel like it's hype because I don't like myself. I kind of just like, I don't fuck with it that much. But then mm. it's tight because, you know, like, it's so popular. I feel it. Fadi, yeah. you look like you're kind of in a fisheye right now as we speak. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, right? And yeah. juice. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to go with hype just because I, not, I don't think it's cool, but I do think that it is a trend that does come and go sometimes as it is. But I do know, like, um, some of the things you were talking about a few minutes ago, like making it look like the nineties. Every time I think of fisheye, the first thing that comes to mind is Mo Money, Mo Problems, right? And it's um what is it, Biggie and um Diddy in the fisheye futuristic looking in the looking in the camera, right? And it's like zooming in and zooming out at the same time. So I think that's really cool. But I think the whole fisheye in general is um maybe sometimes slightly overused and sometimes more hype than it yeah. should be right <laughs> all right next topic chris angel yeah. flying so i don't know if you're um <laughs> I, i'm not a really big like <laughs> magician or like optical illusion whatever you want to call it like fan um but i do know that there's definitely more conspiracy theories and again a lot of things you can do in the video editing world to make it look like you're doing something in angles when you're not really not right so there's been a few times, right? There's been like multiple occasions where Chris Angel just flies to random parts of America or like the world and all of a sudden like floats off a roof and he's like, I'm flying. And I'm like, all right. So I'm going to throw it to you. Do you think that's hype or tight, Jerome? I think it's, I think it's tight. Oh, yeah, okay. I know it's big for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but there's like a sweet, sweet moment where like, uh, where like I didn't even know magic. I thought wrestling was real. I thought magic was real. I was like, yo, that was dope. But then, like, it's all fake for sure. But it's tight, though. <laughs> so it's tight that they're able to do that. Okay, I feel it. Fine, yeah, you sure so the same thing is tight, but that shit definitely fake. <laughs> like, if they fly, that shit's crazy. But, nah. like, their editing skills are ridiculous. Just to make it look right. like he's flying, he's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm probably on that same wavelength. Uh, I'm just going to go with a fully hype because – especially in my younger days. I mean, we're not that old, but in my younger days, I was super quick to just denounce everything that didn't look even slightly real, right? Like the only thing was probably like that Kobe, that Kobe Ashton Martin thing. Everything else, like I seen him fly off the roof. I'm like, nah, 
I don't care how he's doing it. He's not flying. Right. So I'm going to go with hype in this case. And then for our last topic for uh, hyper tight, we're going to go with the upcoming Godzilla versus Kong movie. Jerome, do you think it's hyper tight? I think it's. I don't know. They've been. I feel like they've been missing like the, those type of movies. Mm. Let's say. Let's say hype. Let's say hype. Did you think, Fadi? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say hype, but then I just hope there's hella monsters. I feel like when they show monster movies, they always show it like hella humans. So I'm trying to see that like two hours of human. I'm trying to see the monsters fight. You know what I mean? So if they That's show facts. that, like, yeah. That's facts. And before I get my answer. I forgot about the um, the Chris Angel flying for the IG poll. That was seventy two percent height, right, and twenty eight percent tight. And then for the fish eye lens, forty three percent hype and fifty seven percent tight, which is actually interesting. And then for um, Godzilla versus Kong, I'm gonna go with. I think there is a lot of hype, but I think if they do it right, it could be tight. So I'm gonna go with hype in in uh, my answer just because. I don't know. I feel like they 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 flop a lot on a lot of these movies that have like really good ideas. Like, oh, we're just gonna fight two giant creatures against each other, and then like make it all about like Fadi said, the humans. Nobody cares about the humans. You're trying to see an hour and a half of like two forty foot monsters or whatever fight each other and like special effects and stuff. So hopefully it doesn't flop, but I think it probably will in its hype. And forty six percent of people on the poll said hype, and fifty four percent said type. Well, so there's that like pretty close yeah, kind of already right down the middle yeah so in this next segment we're going to talk a little bit about kind of like your mentality and uh, a little bit about um what type of mindset it takes to like do what you do right yeah so you've been known at least to me right me and um danny you've known to have some like crazy turnaround times in some of your art and some of your work like i was there for the bill video right that's actually where yeah. um i met you and i was there for the orange soda video right and in both of these in both of these um videos and projects really right it took you from first what first action to finish product like less than 12 hours and that goes with shooting directing editing and if you wanted to if you had all the artist approval like posting it and putting it out yeah. how do you stay locked in for multiple hours at a time when it's not something you're like getting paid hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for it i'm, I'm just i'm just hungry you know, basically um and and Danny makes it easy too because um he just he pretty much gives me like full control on, on everything he just trusts me with it like i remember for orange soda um, he came he, he came over my place um uh, we were just like brainstorming on like i think another music video for like another song um, but then he played me orange soda and i'm just like i just like him wanting to hear it i'm like i just kind of vibe with it i think it um uh, i think for like for fast turnarounds it depends if you vibe with the song if you vibe with the person and you like you really like like what you created like it's it's like a it's like an itch that you can't you know like that you have to scratch off basically you know what i mean like uh, i don't know i just had to uh, i have to finish that you know there's some things i just gotta like get in the lab right away i can't just like sit on those clips you know what i mean like there's like i know there's some shots that like that i was like experimenting with and i was like oh i can't wait to see how this looks you know what I mean? yeah that's pretty much what kept me locked in yeah yeah it's funny yeah. you were there for the uh, body was there for the bill music video like it's on scene he was in it ronnie you're in mm-hmm. for the orange soda music video so that's cool uh i'm the one um driving the car if nobody knows like the car scenes you know that's me that's not my car i don't believe but i'm the one um whipping the tessie if you feel me i mean but like those yeah like but those actual scenes it's not like you're just throwing stuff together like you have actual edits and actual like crazy edits that go along with these things right it's not like you're just putting putting pieces together right you are filming uploading directing and crafting a masterpiece in 12 hours so I'll, I'll just want to give you, your, yeah. I just want to give you're you your kudos while you're here with us today. Right uh, on for that. So, how do you quantify growth in terms of getting better at your craft, and are there similarities for growth in other parts of your life? Yeah, yeah. I learned that um, just going through life and everything, um, especially with the video stuff. I just learned um, just how I grow and um, what keeps me going because um, it's so easy to to burn yourself out. Like, 
in, in a job that you don't really like or even in this video stuff like I got burned out too and had like a hiatus for a bit but um yeah there's definitely like um the same type of uh type of like a path it takes when going with this like with the video stuff um you know I'm just I was just just working with people just uh, just with like honestly just homies um, and it just makes it fun you know like like um, for the learning part like just making it fun helps um, and then eventually you know like after I've mastered the craft or when I, when I master the craft you know like then like it'll just be easy and second nature to me but yeah it's pretty much just the same as life you know mm -hmm. the big and stuff and does that hunger like like you were talking about like staying locked in mentally like you're talking of being hungry but also you have to make it fun too right because if you don't actually enjoy what you're doing then you don't want to do it right yeah 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 it's it's finding a balance like um i remember um i tried to think where like like it did have a lot of fun like i tried to think where like i tried to get uh, all these people together in one in one room and then i made like, like one music videos i shot it and directed all of them in like a short amount of time that was fun but then um also finding a balance of like how much work you can put in, you know, because at the end, like it also has to be fun editing it too. So just like leaving space for yourself to create and not putting too much on your plate. It's pretty much what I mean. I feel that, I feel that. <laughs> so before the editing, before the special effects, how do you know the scene that you shot is the one? I don't. I mean I'm, I'm learning to uh to actually like master uh like the filming part um I think I think I kind of focus more on editing mm. focus more on, on connecting with other people and directing because then it's like it's hard to manage all these things but um I guess I'm learning with the actual like film part that like like if you gotta like film it again, like you know, just just like just be like, all right, we gotta take that shot again, or just I just try to shoot as much as I can, like whether it be like you know, takes or do performances, the same setting. And yeah, you, know, you just kind of get used to um, get used to how the artist is. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like mainly like my process is uh, just doing like like one full performance scene just to get comfortable comfortable to like. Like I'm comfortable with like the shot and the settings, and then the artist is comfortable with the setting too, how he's gonna perform and stuff. So yeah, it's finding like a process like that helps. And then uh, before you shoot, do you um like do you have a storyboard already kind of like to build the foundation off of, and do you kind of just like stick to that, or do you just you know see what looks cool and kind of just do what you like feel like is good in the moment? Ideally, I'd want to have like a storyboard because like um I mean, that just makes like shooting overall just easier but I, I kind of just I kind of just go on the vibe um, of artists most of the time um, they kind of give me like an overview and I already have like some shots in my head so I kind of just write it down um, I, I don't necessarily like draw it out but um probably just just write it out and then I'll on set then I'll kind of like kind of have a better um, idea of what to do sometimes it used to be scary like not being able to know like what type of angle or anything is but then I'm, I'm interested like trust it comes out pretty good mm. and i was gonna ask um when you're shooting are you also thinking about editing because you said uh right now you think you focus more on editing so like when you're actually shooting the scene are you thinking about like different ways to edit it or different ways to make it basically um like massage it into what you want it to be if the scene's not perfect yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely, um, when I'm editing, I'm definitely uh, locked in just like, I like, I basically just have to wear like an editor's hand, you know what I mean, when I edit. Like, I try to um, just think of like, how would an editor think, you know, and like, I try to keep separate from my director self mm -hmm. or like my cameraman self. Uh, yeah, like when I'm actually filming, I'm, I'm trying to think of more just like, a, just like, is the shot good? You know, just so like, you like save me time, like when I'm editing, like make sure everything is good. Um, yeah, I don't think too much about editing, honestly, when I'm, when I'm shooting. I'm kind of just thinking more of, like, just, like, in the moment, like, is everything good with the settings or um, is the lighting good? Uh, but, yeah, I don't think too much as an editor when I'm, like, on scene. Mm. That's, that's important. That's important. I think that's actually, 
that's actually cool that you wear like multiple hats at once as you're doing like the whole process you know from like um actually storyboarding it to directing with your storyboarding and working with the artist to shooting as you're directing and then editing and all again the 12 hour thing just blows my mind every time i think about it because no. if i ever had to turn something like that around i'd, I'd shit myself honestly <laughs> i'd be like yo this ain't this ain't happening i get you like thursday what's today saturday you, you <laughs> might be getting it on thursday but like nah like look, let me just pop a couple of espressos in i got you 2 a.m it's yours turn around yo. it's crazy like we shot it at seven like how are you turning no nah, like you're you're the goat for that i just want to let you know that you're the goat for that and you know if you can keep that type of work ethic there's actually no ceiling for what you want to do in anything right yeah. So, yeah. just like filming it um and having like sitting on those like uh those videos like like was my like what do you call it? my caffeine and espresso you know what i mean like, mm. i was like up and excited i was like can't wait to like shoot it or like edit this it was exciting to, to edit that yeah that's dope that i mean in life if you if you have something that you're excited about it's just genuinely easier to like want to like be focused in it right like you don't have to have that extra motivation like you are hungry for the excitement that you're already doing because it's something you love right love your craft. Yeah. Yep. yep it's your craft right all right so um we asked you a bunch of questions is there anything that you want to talk about that we missed you know just anything you want to get off your chest you know your moment Uh, what do you guys want to be remembered for you know i was actually oh. thinking about that you know I, as he as he was talking about that i was thinking about that um well i'm going all in on producing so that is my main focus at this point and i want to be remembered for making music that is timeless like it won't only be good now because like it's the hype i want it to be like forever remembered on like a solid body of work. Cause I don't wanna like, I don't wanna drop shit just to drop shit. I want everything I dropped to have a meaning, like it's a whole story behind it. To make sure it's not only for that moment. Make sure it's not hype. Make sure it's tight. Make sure it's not hype. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's tight. <laughs> that also makes me think about like, like we we all like in college or went to college, like none of this thing that like we go to college for or went to college for are actually our like legacy or we actually think about it to be our legacy right it's just something that we do and that's a whole nother conversation that i don't know if i want to get into but it just it popped into my mind it's like when i think about it just like your legacy is something that four years won't define you or a piece of paper won't define you you actually have to like jerome said be excited and be hungry to want to do it to want to pull those days to want to like make a difference like you said to want to create an everlasting piece of art that has a story behind it that you get to tie your name and your legacy to so i was just thinking about that but um when it's all said and done what do i want to be remembered for i'd probably say if i could connect people and just not force collaboration but force the idea of collaboration over competition onto people just so that we have so many more bodies of work and just so many more like dope pieces of art that we already have out today i just think that there's nothing cooler than seeing two people or two artists or two creators work together that you both think are dope individually right because i don't i don't think that there's a more stronger piece of art that can come out of working with somebody right there's nothing that you can do alone that will ever touch something that you can do together with somebody. And that's just Absolutely. how I feel. So if I can promote the idea that, you know, everybody eats and there's no reason to try to compete with people because you're basically already on your own path. And if you're trying to compete with people on your path, you're creating your own obstacles, right? Your own roadblock. Do, exactly. Do what you want to do and hopefully do it with people and make really dope content really dope art really dope memories and really dope experiences mm -hmm. so that's my that's my um two cents it's dope. yeah all right Jerome. thank you for coming on um how do like how do we support you how do people how do people find you and find your art how do they support you you know like try and get you to the top bro it's the plug talk 
Yeah. Plug yourself. What you Plug gotta yourself. say? Yeah. I forgot what YouTube uh, URL is, but uh, we'll throw it in the Instagram. description. We'll we'll put it somewhere. We got you. <laughs> Instagram. Too. Just check out my um, Instagram, Jerome Liviano. Uh, we got some. I've been working on. I've been cooking on some music videos. Mm. I got some videos that are I'm about to film soon. So yeah, just stay tuned on the Instagram. We'll go soon. Yep. Stay tuned. He's cooking. Yep. Uh, we we got some things in the way. We got some things in the way. I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah, but we just want to thank you one more time for um, coming on and doing this here interview with us. We mm -hmm. hopefully yes. uh, we know you got some dope stuff coming in twenty one, and we'll be here for it. We love to support it, and thank you for rocking with us personally. Fuck yeah, of course, thank you, bro. It's all love. It's all love. Hey, no, hey. No, is there a timer? All right. Oh, it's just recording. You see, you see a timer? You good? I mean, we can edit this out, but all right. <clears throat> I was thinking about it yesterday, too. So, Friday, if you don't want to go first or if you don't know, I'll go. go. Yeah. So, I was oh. thinking yesterday. No, you want to no. go? Go for it. No, go good. Go good. Right. Okay, good, good. Here you go. <laughs> Friday, what do you want to do? We gotta, we gotta uh, keep like bugging him so he can so jump there. Yeah, that, that's the thing about him, like that guy that uh, never shall be named. Actually, I was thinking about we've we've named him on every single episode. This is episode five. We have we've name dropped him every single episode. So if you don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about um, young Daniel Ali. He just has things and just stores, dope songs, music videos, whatever, and just like sits on it. Oh, Where this, we got this so is so much. This is pretty good. Got, <laughs> it's fitting. I'm like, bro, if you don't drop it, he's sitting on classic, like, right? And we know Jerome, like, that, that they used to Jerome. Jerome could shoot it, edit it, bro, film it in the same you know, day. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, young Daniel, if you listen to this, drop your shit. Drop your shit. <laughs>